Bristol's Myers Squibb stock, ticker symbol BMI. This stock is down 32% on the one year chart, massively underperforming the S&P 500. And Zach told us in the Discord group he is buying this stock, so I think it is the perfect time to do an analysis. On the 26th of October, BMI presented quarterly earnings with a beat on both the EPS and revenue. For the upcoming earnings early February, almost all analysis expect another beat on earnings, potentially pushing this stock up. More on that later in this video. And people love BMI stock because of multiple reasons, and one of the main thing being the dividend. And I understand why with dividend yield at 4.8% a low payout ratio and some decent growth numbers. And if we look at the total returns in the past 5 years, we see that BMI stock underperforms the S&P 500 big time. So could this be the perfect time to buy BMI stock? Well, by the end of the video I will give you my 3 price targets, so make sure to stay tuned and see how I build up to this price target. And more importantly, which price target is the most justified in my opinion? I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does BMI do? Bristol Myers Quip discovers, develops and markets drugs for various therapeutics areas such as cardiovascular, cancer and immune disorders. A key focus for Bristol is immuno-oncology where the firm is a leader in drug development. Bristol derives close to 70% of total sales from the US, showing a high dependence on the US market than most of its peer group. Before we dive into the earnings, I think it's worth mentioning that Bristol Myers Squibb acquires RaceBio and Karuna Therapeutics. The acquisition of Karuna is to diversify and strengthen the presence in neuroscience. And with the acquisition of RaceBio, BMI adds a premier radio pharmaceutical platform to the portfolio. And when we dive in the most recent earnings report we see that total net sales was reported at 11 billion, with a gap EPS of $0.93 per share. BMI also updated the full year guidance of 2023, which will be reported the 2nd of February. They expect the full year to be in a range of $3.68 to $3.83 per share and total revenue to decline low single digit. For the medium term financial targets they expect to deliver low to single mid digit returns for the revenue compound annual growth rate up until 2025. And they expect operating margin higher than 37%, which is great, but lower than the previous 40%. Another interesting thing is that in the third quarter, inline products grew only 3%, but the new product performance was outstanding with 68% increase year over year. Right now this group only does 928 million, but BMI expects 10 billion in revenue from this new product portfolio in 2026. And with that they focus more on product acceleration to enable future growth and expanding the new product portfolio with two new drugs. The oncology segment is reporting great revenue year over year with 11% on the lowest, all the way up to 98% for the individual drug. The cardiovascular segment is really lagging in growth with only 2% and they represent a big chunk of the total revenue. It is the same with hematology segment also representing a big chunk, but the biggest drug in this segment is down 41% year over year. In the immunology segment, the biggest drug is growing at a slow pace of only 5%, but the smaller drug in this segment is showing some decent growth with 78%. And now that we know a bit more about the company, it's time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week and also join my discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free so don't miss it out. Let's continue by diving into the fundamentals. BMI stock is a 102 billion market cap company. PE ratio is at 12 indicating they could be undervalued right now. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for BMI stock, so make sure to watch until the end. 
And in the meantime, please let me know your thoughts on the current valuation on BMI stocks. And I'm also interested to hear your thoughts in general on this company. Revenue is at 45 billion and in this graph we see that revenue went up in the long run. However, it goes up and down a lot and with revenue soaring in 2020, it is interesting to see what will happen in the coming years, since this was of course related to the Rony virus. Margins are going up and down over a longer period of time. Most recently they started to increase again, and to be honest this was much needed after the lockdown periods. EPS is looking pretty similar to the revenue and the margin. After the lockdown periods it started to increase again, but still keep an eye on this number. Analysts expect that EPS will stay at roughly the same number with some increases and some decreases over the years. To me this doesn't look any good. For the revenue, analysts expect revenue to decrease over the coming years, which is really disappointing. The only thing I wonder is that in the presentation BMI was claiming that new products is really going to lift off in terms of revenue, so that's something to keep in mind. Return on assets is sitting at 12.7%, which is a great number. Return on equity looks really good, and the most important number return on invested capital is sitting at 9%, which is not that great to be honest, also since it's lower versus the 5 year average. I prefer 10% or higher here, so they are almost there. Current ratio is at 1.18, which is a decent number, nothing really special to mention here to be honest. Right now BMI has 39 billion in debt, and I prefer companies that can pay down at least a big chunk of their total debt with the total cash. BMI has roughly 7.7 .7 billion in total cash, so they can't pay down a big chunk of their debt. This is something that I don't like. So it is very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt of course, but also to buy back shares, pay dividends and all other things. And here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run, at somewhat of a decent pace. Of course we also see the impact during the lockdown periods. Shares outstanding have increased a lot in the past decade, however most recently they started to buy them back again, which is the positive thing here. When shares outstanding are decreasing it increases your ownership in the company, it increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 4.79% which is a great number. Annual pairs is at $2.4 and pairs ratio is at 30%. I prefer 50% or lower, so right now they have 70% left in cash to buy big shares, pay down debt, do acquisitions and all other things. The 5 year growth rate is at 7.5% which is a decent number. They have increased the dividends for 7 years in a row, which is also really nice. And if you take a look at these numbers, the dividends paid since 2012, you see that BMI did increase the dividends at a slow pace. However, over a longer period of time, this really adds up. Paired ratio is a very important metric with dividends, it tells you if the dividends are safe. And here we see that paired ratio is coming down, which is a good thing. To me, this looks really healthy. In this graph we see the expected dividends in 2024 and 2025. Of course this is an estimation and can be highly impacted by results, but it gives you a rough indication. It's expected to increase at the same rate as the past couple of years. And overall these dividends look really interesting to me, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare BMI stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. Next to that I added AppFi and Amgen. On the 5 year chart we see that BMI had the lowest return versus the others in this list, and this is including dividends. BMI returned 18.5% in total, while AppFi sits at the top of this list with 134%. On the 1 year chart things look pretty interesting, BMI again had the lowest return with minus 29%, while the S&P 500 is having the highest return with 26%. On the 6 point chart it is again BMI sitting at a negative return with minus 21%. This time both AppFi and Amgen are having significant higher returns versus the S&P 500. On the 1 month chart, you guessed it, BMI had again a negative return and both AppFi and Amgen did beat the S&P 500 again. 
Bottom line, BMI was beaten by both the S&P 500 and Epi and Amgen in the short run, but also in the long run. So could this be the perfect time to buy BMI stock? Well, let's check the three price targets that are created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the three price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth, I'm filling in 2, 4 and 6%. Based on historical performance, their own outlook, but also because of the analysis. For the profit margin, I'm putting in 16, 18, and 20. For the free cash flow margin, I'm putting in 24, 26, and 28. For the PE ratio, I'm putting in 11, 12, and 13. For the price to free cash flow, I'm putting in slightly lower numbers. My desired annual return is 12.5%, since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now, BMI stock is at $49 to $50. I hit analyze, and we see a few green numbers. We have a low price target of $34 to $49. We have a mid price target of $45 to $63. And we have a high price target of $60 to $81. To me, the mid price target is the most justified here, meaning the stock is kinda undervalued, with the low side of this range sitting at almost $46 but the high side sitting at $63. So what do you think is the most justified price target here? My final conclusion on BMI stock is that I really like the company. Most fundamentals look pretty decent and they were influenced by the lockdown periods a lot, which sometimes makes it harder to put any predictions for the management, but also for us as investors. Of course, there are some concerns with the future growth and margins, but most of the things I mentioned before can be fixed by the management in my opinion. They are doing some acquisitions which is really great and they also expand their new product line, which is also great. From a dividend point of view, things look really exciting and this is what most investors are seeking for, I guess, when it comes to buying this stock. From a value point of view, things also look pretty decent. It is not massively undervalued, but I think there is some potential especially since they are hammered down a lot in the past couple of years. The company has a really great chance of proving themselves this year. I expect in the upcoming earnings some disappointing results, which can be great, since this will push down the stock down even more. For now, I'm waiting for these earnings to release, so I can get a better view of how things are developing. Especially the outlook is something that I'm really interested in. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about the stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.